big question in everybody's mind. When did you know about the operation to get Osama bin Laden? Well, I, I, I would prefer to not talk about timelines and, uh, uh, and events, but I think what we can all be proud of are the great work uh, that, that the SEALs did. Uh, but as you know, there's much more involved in a very complex and precise operation like that. Uh, than just the assault force and the, the entire uh, group that put it together, the, the many, many people that were involved. And I would also highlight the role of intelligence. Uh, absolutely painstaking work, um, uh, very, very detailed work, dogged determination uh, that all came together to produce uh, an, a, a successful outcome like that. I think we can all be proud of that. Well, why this? Why the secrecy? Because this seems like a moment for America to really, um, you know, honor the Navy and the people who worked on this, and I, in a way, celebrate. Not not to be, um, uh, you know, morbid about things. But last week, uh, our producer was trying to get confirmation from the Navy that you had even been involved in this, at the same time as the president is honoring the the Navy SEALs that were involved. Yeah. Well, I think as you look at that type of force that we have, uh, first of all, there. Uh, extraordinary operators, extraordinary uh, professionals and patriots, uh, but they also uh, operate and work uh, in a very quiet way, uh, in a very obscure way. And I think as you look back over the role that SEALs have played over time, uh, they do their work, they do that work extraordinarily well, and then they slip back into the shadows. Will we ever know who they were, or will that be up to Bob Woodward? Uh, my sense is that uh, SEALs like uh, the way that they operate, and it also gives them uh, the ability to continue uh, to be that force that the nation can use for the most challenging assignments. But again, I also come back to the fact that um, while they have figured prominently in a lot of the discussions that have taken place, the rest of the team, the rest of the effort that went into this, truly extraordinary and uh, and indicative of a force that everyone in this country can be proud of. Can you at least say if this ranked in the most exciting weeks of your <laughs> career? Well, I think it uh, ranks as a very noteworthy week. Uh, but you know, the Navy has been busy, uh, particularly in the last couple of months. If you look at uh, what we have done in, in, let's just go back two months, um, providing for the initial operations that allowed us to establish the no-fly zone in Libya, uh, maintaining a global presence uh, as we always do, uh, particularly in the Middle East as the changes are really sweeping through that region in a way that um, I think all of us here in this room, at least within our lifetime, have never seen before. And then, of course, at the same time all that was taking place, uh, the devastation that struck Japan and the ability to bring in the USS Ronald Reagan uh, and the, the Marines that are stationed there, plus all of the other resources that we have to provide the humanitarian assistance. And even uh, in areas that are not as, as uh, notable, for example, the nuclear Navy that we have, a good part of it, which is up here in Bangor with our nuclear submarines, uh, of course our nuclear aircraft carriers that are, um, uh, that are in Everett, um, the, the expertise that our people have in the Navy in nuclear power, uh, we were able to provide uh, technical assistance information and also to support decision makers, not just in Japan, but also in, uh, in our country. Admiral, were we prepared to fight Pakistani forces if they had responded? Um, I, I, uh, I know that's a burning question, but I'm, I'm not going to get into any of the particulars, what some of the speculation would be. Uh, I think uh, what we did was a significant operation. It removed Osama bin Laden uh, from, uh, from the planet, and, uh, and so I think we can all be proud of the work that was done there. Um. I know we're, we keep asking you about the about the big news of the last couple of weeks, and it's obviously something that's pretty sensitive for you guys. But I guess uh, I'm wondering, can you say anything to what the naval involvement was with his burial at sea, Bin Laden's body? Because that has to be a pretty unique request. Well, I, uh, burials at sea are not new to the Navy. Uh, we do them um, not infrequently. 
uh, many of our veterans uh, uh, elect to be buried at sea, mm-hmm. which I think is indicative of the love they have of the service and, and, and what they have done throughout their lives. So burials at sea uh, are not unusual. Um, but I think it also speaks to the flexibility of the force to be able to accommodate uh, things like that and, uh, and, and to do it um, in, a, in a very uh, professional and dignified way, which I think as, as a Navy, as a nation, as uh, citizens who uh, respect um, uh, life to, to be able to, to respond in an appropriate way. Uh, We're talking to Admiral Gary Roughhead. He's the uh, top officer in the Navy, uh, and you're here in Seattle. I guess you're going to be meeting with some uh, naval folks later out on, uh, on, is it a a carrier? Right. I'll be on board Abraham Lincoln, uh, but I'll meet with more than just the sailors from uh, from Abraham Lincoln. I'll meet with uh, sailors from other commands in the area. Just uh, an opportunity for me to thank them for their great work, but also uh, I always find it helpful to get away from Washington and listen to people who are doing the work of the Navy. And uh, I get great ideas from them. I get, a, get to get a sense of uh, what's on their mind, what's on the minds of their families. And ironically, um, you know, I'm visiting Abraham Lincoln here, but it was only a couple of months ago I was on board Abraham Lincoln in the North Arabian Sea, uh, where she had been operating for some time, doing great work, uh, supporting our operations in Afghanistan, where... Uh, the air support that is provided to our troops on the ground in Afghanistan, about 30% fly off of our aircraft carriers in the North Arabian Sea. So even though we tend to think of aircraft carriers in a, in a more uh, you know, expansive role, for the past nine years uh, we have had carriers there supporting our troops on the ground in Afghanistan, which for our pilots is uh, not an insignificant mission to fly all that way in. It's normally about an eight or a nine hour mission. So if you can imagine sitting in a less comfortable chair than you're in today for about that length of time, refueling about four times and then in the middle of the night recovering back aboard an aircraft carrier in the pitch black. Uh, so even, even with the support of an aircraft carrier, they're still looking at eight hours getting from that point into That's Afghanistan? That's correct. Yeah, it's a, it's a long flight from the You guys the North thought, thought about parking closer to the shore. <laughs> well, that's uh, we've got it in about as close as we want her to be. Uh, but it does give us the flexibility. And I think the one thing that, uh, that aircraft carriers do allow us to do is to move that air power anywhere in the world, wherever we want it to be. We don't have to ask anyone for basing rights. We don't have to ask anyone for overflight rights. Um, these are sovereign airfields that uh, are at the disposal of the nation. What is the effect on the troops? Because there was a USA Today survey showing that because of the repeated deployments and the workload, and I guess that eight-hour commute is going to be part of that, that morale has been dropping. What's morale like? Well, I would submit that what we have seen, and I watch this very carefully, um, that we see uh, positive views of the Navy. Uh, I also look at the the opinions of uh, spouses uh, who are married to sailors, uh, that has been increasing. Um, and in fact, uh, one of the greatest challenges we have in the Navy today is too many people want to stay in, uh, which is one of the things that I wanted to come out and talk to our sailors about because um, it's, it's, um, uh, we have to keep the Navy at the levels that are uh, directed by Congress and by, uh, by the budgets that we have. And at the same time, I have to be able to provide for that upward mobility of young men and women who come in and, and like what they do, then they want to advance up through the ranks. And if we get jammed at the top, that flow doesn't take place. How do you, uh, how do you incentivize somebody leaving the Navy maybe earlier than they want to? Well, we have uh, something that we call involuntary separation pay. Uh, that's a function of their, their seniority in the Navy and the length of time that they've served. Uh, we will go through a very structured uh, and, and I think a very fair process to look at uh, uh, a number of sailors to select the number that we uh, will regrettably uh, ask to go home. Uh, but that's, that's a function of uh, the service that we're in today. It's a great place to be. Uh, we enjoy uh, extraordinary compensation, uh, I would submit, relative to uh, several other professions. And, and, and given the fact that on any given day, about 40% of our Navy is deployed uh, in, in terms of ships, airplanes, submarines, about 65,000 sailors are deployed away from home on any given day. Wow. Uh, the, 
the, that, that we're out doing things. I mentioned the work we did in Libya, uh, the presence we provide in the Middle East. We have 14,000 sailors on the ground in Iraq and Afghanistan, which is kind of unusual for a Navy well, to be doing Well, let's talk big that. picture. You have 267 ships now. 286. 286, right. I'm sorry. And you want 313. Why do – explain why we need that many ships because it looks like we have taken on at our expense the role of patrolling the world. Well, I would submit that it's not so much that we have taken on that role recently. Uh, the United States Navy has been deployed for about 235 years. Uh, I often say that, uh, you know, the counter piracy operations we're doing off Somalia, that's why we exist. That's how we started going right. after the Barbary pirates. But uh, the presence that our Navy provides, uh, whether it's in the Western Pacific, the Indian Ocean, the Arabian Gulf, uh, provides a, a sense of security, stability that enables the flow of the resources and the goods that enable our prosperity, prosperity of, of other nations. Uh, and, for example, in the Middle East, we've been there consistently for the last 60 years. Uh, so that presence uh, just adds Can to I ask you this because we're sure. out of time here, and I may, may never get an admiral in the studio again. Um, could you give me an example of what it's like when you give an order as an admiral? Like, like if I like if I showed up and I was completely out of uniform, you know, how would you uh, address me? I'm a very mild mannered person, uh, really. But uh, but I think it, it would be clear to you that you were out of uniform and you needed to. Just change of the way well, follow Absolutely. follow up question because I was uh, in the airport at O'Hare yesterday and being detained for reasons I don't understand, shampoo related, I guess. And I saw someone walking in a in a naval uniform, and I thought that's what I've got to get. I assume that you just breeze through security with this outfit on, right? No, I go through security just like everybody Seriously? else. Really? I do. Absolutely. So much for my plan. That seems uncalled for. Admiral Gary Ruffhead, great to meet you. Thank you very much well, for coming in. Thank you for your time, and thank you for the interest in uh, the men and women who serve, particularly those in this area, which is a great, great place uh, for our Navy men and women to be. I'm I appreciate looking forward it. to seeing you today.